Welcome back everyone to another brand new video today. In this video, you are gonna learn exactly how I set up and structure a successful and profitable Google search campaign. I use this method across my own businesses as well as other clients I work with. I'll start by showing you the results I've gotten from this method and then I will go step by step on how exactly you can create this type of campaign successfully and it'll be easy because I'll be going step by step and you can follow exactly what I do. Just before we do get into this, if you are struggling with Google Ads as a whole and you want a team of experts to help manage and grow your Google Ads account for you, then click the link in the description, my Google Ads agency ad rule. We are looking to take on a few more clients as we approach Q4 this year, so get in touch and I'm sure we can make something work with you. So if we jump into my Google account here for one of my businesses, you can see the results we have gotten all time for this particular search campaign. Now, I usually have two different search campaigns in every Google account I work on. One being a branded search campaign, very simple, very straightforward and self-explanatory. I've made a couple couple of videos on how to set those up properly but brand search is something you run alongside everything else a very low budget and it's just going to get those easy conversions for you but the purpose of this search campaign is cold outreach getting new customers and new eyeballs onto your business no matter if it's e-commerce a service-based business or anything like that you're going to want a separate search campaign for this so you can see here over the lifetime of this particular campaign we have spent 45,000 pounds generating 118,000 in return at 2.6 ROAS like I've mentioned before this particular business the break-even ROAS is around a 1.4 to 1.5 so this is nicely profitable and definitely a great extra avenue of profitable sales for this business and you can see even if we go into the graph here in Q4 last year in 2023 alone we spent £12,000 on this campaign and it almost generated a 3x return on ad spend so £34,000 of extra revenue just in Q4 last year just from search is very good indeed I thought I'd show you this because even before I started with Google I was very skeptical with search ads and I didn't really think they would work because it's just text based whereas Google Shopping you've got the product price you've got the image and things like that I'm here to show you obviously you can see right here that this does work now there are many ways you can obviously create Google search campaigns but we're going to now jump into a step-by-step -step creation guide of essentially my proven method of a Google search campaign so we want to click new campaign and then go from here so obviously this is going to be based on an e-commerce type of business because my business is an e-commerce business and I work with e-commerce business clients as well and our objective obviously is going to be sales now obviously here you want to make sure your purchase conversion goal tracking is all set up correctly I've done a few videos on that if you haven't got conversion tracking set up properly on Google you really shouldn't be running Google Ads at all it is the number one thing that you need to get done before you even consider spending any money on Google because if you're not tracking conversions Google is going to have no idea and you're going to have no idea about what's working and what isn't so please 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 make sure you've got that on there now it's going to give you the campaign option type we're going to steer away from obviously Pmax and shopping and going to go for search this time around then on this bottom section just obviously enter your website URL here I always like to use Gymshark as the example for these videos obviously I don't own Gymshark but it's a good website to use just as an example whilst we make this draft campaign now I do like to call these types of search campaigns segmented because it's just a way of reminding me on how to structure these search campaigns so and this will make more sense in a minute but that's what I call it now bidding there are a few bid strategies here now I just want to quickly speak a little bit about this because some people get caught up on bidding what's the best strategy now there's sort of a very simple answer for this if you're a brand new account with no conversion data I would recommend running clicks on this section here I would also recommend setting a max CPC limit and this is to avoid wasted spend because sometimes without this Google you know it might average a you know one pound per click for example but if you've not got this on you might end up paying five six seven pound for one-off clicks here and there and you really sort of don't want that to begin with especially when you have a limited budget so if you've got a brand new Google account or an account with very minimal conversion data I would do clicks set a maximum click limit start it fairly low if you don't get impressions and things like that gradually increase it you know every two three days obviously Google isn't like Facebook you make a Facebook campaign it will get you know impressions within a few hours and usually spend its daily budget straight away that's never really the case with Google it does take a little while to gain momentum so don't stress if you're not seeing clicks within the first day or two so that would be what I would do for a new account if you've got an account with conversion data and you can use things like target ROAS bid strategy I would personally use the conversion value setting here and then setting a target ROAS because Google's already got a bunch of data on your business but make sure you're realistic here you know if you're setting a 700% target ROAS it's really not going to work and you're not going to get any spend now a good way to judge this if you're running performance max or shopping let's say they're achieving you a 2.5 ROAS just start this at the same target ROAS of what your other campaigns are achieving you can always lower this if it's not getting much spend or if it is 
achieving this and spending its daily budget, you can always gradually up this as well. So now I'm using this on a demo account, which is why it says we can't use a target ROAS. And again, if you're a new account, this message will appear as well. And then obviously at that point, you would go back to maximize click. So we'll go ahead and do that for this account as it is a fresh demo account. Now optimize for acquiring new customers. I usually leave this ticked off only because as your brand grows, yes, you've got a brand search campaign separate, but if you can get a few conversions here and there within this campaign for your branded terms, I do believe that does help optimize a campaign because you're getting more conversions through this campaign. Now on the next page here, you've got a couple of options. You've got Google search network. I usually like to leave that on, but I do click off the display network, mainly because for me anyway, I find it is very cheap traffic, which is obviously some people might see as good, but it, the worst quality traffic I think Google can supply you if you like. So I'd leave this on. It doesn't necessarily matter. I usually just leave it on. And then next of all, you want to make sure the country is correct. And another very important thing you want to make sure on the location options, you want to click the other option, people in or regularly in your included locations, because this top option here, it says people who have shown interest in your location. So I'm in the UK. If I show an interest on Google somehow that I'm interested in Germany, for example, I could start seeing German search ads. And that's obviously going to be no relevance to me because I don't speak that language and things like that. So just to be safe, make sure this bottom option is selected. And if you need to put your language in there as well. I don't start with audience segments. As you grow your account, you can add your own custom data within here. But obviously audience segments doesn't mean Google are going to only target the audiences you provide it. It's kind of like Facebook does now. They go beyond your sort of criteria. But because this is a new account, I do leave that blank. Now the keyword match types here doesn't matter because you can change this when you're making your ads. So just completely ignore that. And then on the more settings tab, you don't really need to do anything unless you want to schedule your campaign to start at midnight the next day, you can do so. But then on to next, you want to skip the AI section. I don't know if it's just me, but Google's AI generation within the account itself is just absolutely horrendous. So I don't use Google AI at all. I use AI for my businesses, chat GPT and things like that. I'd never use the Google sort of automatic suggestions. Now, Google has already given us a bunch of keywords here, and this is essentially your targeting for the campaign. Your ads are going to show for people who use these search terms on Google. Now, many of you already probably know this, but I'm going to quickly mention the different keyword match types. You can see broad match, which is what this is currently is. If you want a phrase match keyword, you want to just add these uh, marks just to either side of each search term here. And then for the exact match, you want to be using this here. Now, personally, I use broad only. Google is so good now at still sort of showing your ads to relevant people without having to use phrase or exact match keywords. So the only situation that I use exact match keywords is on brand search campaign and obviously make sure you're only appearing for exact branded terms. Whereas this is cold outreach and cold prospecting, you want to make sure this is on broad. Google does do a very good job. You just have to give it a little bit of time. Why this is called a search segmented campaign is because I treat each ad group as a unique product or landing page. So we're using Gymshark as an example here. Instead of doing a generic ad group like this, every single Gymshark collection or type of product, I would have this ad group just for leggings, for example. I would then remove these. I would then go through and add a ton of keywords related just to this product or product group. Around 20 is fine for this. So you just want to make sure you're including around 20 keywords or search terms within the keyword section here and have those only related to the actual product or product group you are advertising for this ad group. Now, the reason I do this is because you want to make sure the content you're giving Google for this ad is going to be relevant to that specific product. You don't want to be having, for example, Gymshark here, you know, you don't want to be advertising women's leggings with, you know, men's vests, for example, because it's not going to be relevant. People aren't going to click it and it's just going to confuse people. Whereas if you have all of your content, all of your headlines, your images, your site links, if they're all related to leggings and that's what you've put as the search terms, it just makes sense. And it's just the best way to structure this. And it's easy to then analyze in the future. Okay, this ad group's doing well, which means this product group's doing well and things like that. So once you've done this section here and added your keywords, remember, don't add any of the phrase or exact match. I like to leave them broad. The display path doesn't really matter. It doesn't affect the final URL, but it's a good way of just indicating to the viewer or potential customer what type of page they're going to be landing on. So let's say we're doing high waisted leggings. We could just add this in here and it's just a way you can see it would appear on the Google search. You know, the customer is going to expect to see this type of thing when they land on the landing page. Now, I'm not going to go through and sit here and add every single headline, but this is very, very important. And I do this across all my accounts. I maximize the number of headlines. You can add 15. I maximize the number of descriptions. You can add up to four images as well. People think obviously now search ads are just text based. You can have images in search ads. They appear next to the image. Here is a very good example. Again, with what we're 
doing Gymshark leggings, you can see this is a search ad here, but there is also an image attached to the search ad. And that is because Gymshark have added images in this section here. You can add up to 20 different images in this section. Make sure you're using all 20. The more data and more assets you give Google, I do believe the better the results are gonna be. Obviously this section here, make sure your logo is added, make sure your business name's correct. Site links is another very important thing that I like to use. Let's say you've got a handful of different types of leggings. You might wanna have yoga leggings here, then a final URL to that specific product. You might have cycling shorts, again, a similar product that isn't quite the same, but it's gonna allow people to click these site links here at the bottom of the search ad to explore your business further, to see other product categories. Again, you can have four site links. It's a great way, like I said, more categories, more similar sort of style products. Maximize this, use all four, because it's gonna allow you to take up even more space on that Google search page. And the more space you're taking up, the more attention your ads are gonna get, which will increase the overall click-through rate on them. So there are plenty more additional things you can add, but the site links and the images and obviously maxing out the descriptions and headlines for me are the most important. If you're a lead gen business or a service-based business, it could be great to add your phone number here or a built-in lead form to your ad so people could submit that directly through the ad. So any of these things that you might think are relevant to your business, make sure you add them with your search ads. URL options here, I don't use this. This is for UTM parameters and sort of the Google Ads tracking and things like that. Not something I use. I use server-side tracking, so I don't need this. Now, one thing quickly to go back to, I wouldn't pay too much attention about the ad strength here. Sometimes, it's, it, to be honest, it's quite random. You can have all of your 15 headlines. You can have all of the four descriptions. You can have 20 images, four site links, all of that, and it will still say your ad strength is poor. I don't pay attention to it, so don't feel disheartened if this says poor or good. It will sometimes say excellent, but it's really not something to worry about. And I did forget, sorry, the final URL is going to be the link that the customer lands on after they click your ad. So for this particular example, it would either be a leggings collection page showcasing all of the leggings products, or if it was a specific type of leggings product, you would just put that URL in here and that is what the customer would land on. So once you've done all of that, you click done and then there is your first ad group and ad within your search campaign. You hit next and then choose your daily budget. This is entirely up to you. I like to say the more you spend, the quicker Google is gonna learn, but obviously the more you spend, the more likely you are going to sort of lose money, if you will, at the beginning. I don't see it as losing money. I see it as an investment. You're investing in data. You're investing in Google system that will eventually optimize itself and run seamlessly and profitably for you. So just for this example, I'm going to go 50 pounds per day. Hit next. Once you've done that, you'll be able to publish your campaign and you're ready to go. Now, just finishing off here, this is what a fully segmented search campaign looks like. Jumping back to the account I used at the start of the video, you can see we have a ton of ad groups here that we've tested over the last couple of years in this search campaign. Now, you can clearly see a lot of them are turned off and that's because you know a lot of these ad groups aren't going to work you know similar to products you test on google shopping some products aren't going to work but you can see here we've got a couple of active ad groups here that have very little impressions or spend these are only ad groups i've launched in the last day or two but you can see the ones that are currently on are performing incredibly well i mean this one here at a 3.3 roas lifetime is incredibly profitable so when you have made your campaign you go to the ad group section here and you want to then start adding more ad groups for different product types all you need to do on the ad groups tab here click the plus button and it will just go through the ad group creation process again enter your keywords enter the final url build the ad maximize headlines site links descriptions images and just repeat that process until you've got a fully built search segmented campaign and a good thing with doing this and then eventually using the target ROAS bid strategy you can have a different target ROAS for each ad group for example here you know you might be able to have a 270 percent for this ad group for example because there's more profit to be made in this product the break-even ROAS is lower. If you require a higher ROAS for a different product, you can simply have a higher target. I hope I've clearly explained this and made it sort of concise and not drag on too much. I believe this is a fairly easy step-by-step -step guide to follow. Just make sure once you've launched it, you leave it to run. Google takes time. It's not like Facebook. So please allocate some budget for this. Let it run and don't make changes every single day because you'll completely reset the machine learning when you do so. If you've got any questions, leave a comment down below. DM me on Instagram. I'm happy to help. But other than that, Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in my next video.